Yo, what's happening gang? Welcome to your fifth JavaScript and the DOM tutorial and in this video I'm finally going to show you how to edit HTML and insert text into the DOM. Alright then, so in the last tutorial, if you can remember that far back, I showed you how to use two different methods to query the DOM. Query selector and query select all. And we're using one of those here, query select all, to grab all the elements which have a class of name that are inside an li tag inside the book list ID. So just to have a look at those, if we inspect the elements, we can see this has a class of name inside an li inside the book list. And there's four of those in total inside each one of these li tags, right? So it's going to grab all of those spans with a class of name and store them inside this variable right here called books. So then, now we've queried the DOM, I want to start showing you how we can start to edit the DOM. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you two different properties, the text content and how we can change that, and also the inner HTML and how we can change that. So we'll do the text content first of all. So say, for example, I want to cycle through these books and I want to first of all log the text content of each book to the console and then maybe we'll change it. So first of all, we know we need to turn this into an array or use a for loop. I'm going to use the array method. So I'll say array dot from and we want to turn the books collection into an array. Once we've done that, we can use the for each method to cycle through those and pass in a function which is going to fire on each book. It's going to take the individual book as well through each iteration and we can do something with that book. Hey gang, it's Sean here from the future and I just wanted to clarify one point before I move any further and that's because in the code I just said that we had to turn our books variable into an array before we cycle through them. Now to grab the books I used a method called query select all and when we use this particular method right here that actually returns to us a node list and not a HTML collection. Now we can use the for each method directly on a node list without turning it in to an array. Okay, so we could do something like books dot for each without turning the books into an array. So I just wanted to let you know that because there will be times whereby I'm turning things like this into an array before using the for each method and we don't have to do that. Now there's nothing wrong with turning something into an array. It's still going to behave the same way. And like I said, I will still be doing that throughout this course because I've already recorded the videos. However, I just wanted to let you know that you don't have to do that when you use this method right here and it returns a node list. However, when you use this method, get elements by class name or by tag name, then this returns a HTML collection and you still do need to use the array.from method to turn it into an array before we use the for each method on it. Okay, so when you use this method, you don't need it. When you use this method, you do need it. For now, we're just going to log it to the console. So I'll say console.log and then we're going to log the book.text content okay so this property right here text content is going to grab the text within this element right here this html element so if we save this now and refresh over here go into the console we can see we have each one of these right here logged to the console this is the text content inside each one of these spans right so that's how we retrieve the text content but say we want to change the text content well we can do so instead of logging it to the console, let's say book.text content is equal to something else. So we'll set it equal to test and save that. And now if we refresh, we can see each one has a text content of test, right? So it's overridden the previous content and replaced it with this. Now we might not want to do that. That's a bit daft. Instead, what we could do is append to the content. So instead of replacing it completely, we could append to it by saying plus equals. That's how we append something to a string. Remember, at the end of the day, this is just a string, the text content of an element. So we're going to append something to it instead. And I'm going to append space and then in brackets book title. So if I save that now and go over here, we can see the original content is still there, but we've appended some more text content which is the book title in brackets so i'm just letting people know in case they didn't already know that this is in fact the book title all right cool so that's how we change or update the text content of a particular element now how do we update the html well first of all i want to grab a different element on the page hmm. we'll grab this one book list and go over here i'm going to use the query select again this time i'm going to create a constant called book list and set that equal to documents 
dot query selector this time I don't need to use query selector all because there's only one of the element I want to grab and it's book list so let's paste that in there and we're storing this element now in this variable or this constant right here so then I can change the inner HTML of an element by using the inner HTML property but first of all let's log it to the console I'm going to say console.log book list and then the property name is inner and then in capitals HTML so let's save this and refresh over here and we can see all of this HTML is logged to the console so this is all of the HTML that's inside this book list right here so the h2 then everything inside this ul the li's etc all of that has been logged to the console right there so now let's change it say instead of logging it we want to set it to something else well all we need to say is book list dot inner html is equal to something i'm going to set it equal to a h2 and inside this h2 i'll just say books and more books close that h2 off and if I save this dude now, we're going to see over here that instead of the previous content inside the book list, we get this H2 instead. OK, so it's replaced all of that inner HTML with our own string, this H2 right here. And we can see that over here as well. So we might not always want to replace the whole thing. Sometimes, like up here, we might just want to append to the HTML and we can do that as well. So I'll still replace the whole thing, first of all, here. But down below, I'm going to append to this now. I'm going to say book list dot inner HTML again. Set that equal or rather plus equal to something because we're appending to it this time. We're not just completely replacing it. And I'm going to add on a P tag. And inside this P, I'll say this is how you add HTML. All right. So close that P tag off and save it. And now we can see that this has been appended to this HTML all right so if we inspect this element we can see now this p tag has been added on we've not replaced this h2 we've added it on and in fact if we comment this line out completely and all we're doing now is appending this p tag to the bottom of the HTML we're not replacing the current HTML with this h2 I'll save it we can see that we get all the original HTML and then we get that p tag right at the bottom right there and we can see that if we inspect this is the p tag we've added it to the inner html of this element right here make sense cool so my friends that is how we can change the text content or the inner html or just retrieve it from the dom